that jump right there. Oh, he is all under Mark Martin. He oh, got him. him. You are the real deal, brother. Woo, thank you. That is awesome. And Joey Logano is here, but I'm, I'm blinded by the reflection off that big trophy from Pocono. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have to ask you about the end of the race because that, that battle with Mark Martin, there is no bigger fan of Joey Logano than Mark Martin in that Sprint Cup Series garage. It was, uh, Walk us through that battle. First of all, like you said, everything that Mark Martin's done for me in my career, uh, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for Adam, if it weren't for him. So um, really, that that you owe him that. I, I owe him that much, you know. Wow. It, for the things he said and to, to give me that opportunity to, to be with a great team um, was was huge. At the time, I was 15 years old, and um, I would never dreamed in a million years that I would be out there, you know, racing as Mark Martin. Uh, you know, for for a win at Pocono, uh, you know, and, and having Tony Stewart back there too, and all, all these great race car drivers, and coming down to the wire like that, it was uh, it's a dream come true for sure. Talk us through the pass, because I guess with three to go, it's like lap 157. You get you're right on Mark's bumper, and it, was there a little bit of contact? I mean, did you did you? In other words, was that your plan the whole way? No, it wasn't the plan, and I'm not even sure if I hit him or not. I, I may have. It was really light if I did, and I wasn't really sure. But, um, you know, he got me on that last restart, which was a surprise. You know, it was, it was down the straightaway. Before we even got in the corner, he cleared me into the corner. And, um, you know, those, those restarts there, you get such a long time before you get into turn one that it's kind of an arrow war. You know, you got someone's pushing this guy yeah. or side drafting the other guy. And um, he was able to get out ahead of me before we even got into one. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I got pretty mad at that point. And I was like, man, I got to run him down. And um, he, he bobbled a little bit off a of three and was able to get a run. And, um, you know, he's trying to outbreak him getting into one. And uh, it's got right up on him and he's getting arrow loose. And uh, like I said, I'm not sure. I may have gotten in, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's just hard racing there at the end. And, uh, you know, once I got underneath him, was able to clear him. And that clean air is worth a million bucks. Did, did you know, because the reason I ask, I started to say, did you know when you're going to make the move? I remember talking to you after Talladega. And you're like, I've had plans before. I've just never been able to execute them. <laughs> right. So so was this the same thing? Did you know where you wanted to get Mark? Or did you just have to seize an opportunity? I think any opportunity you got there at Pocono to pass a car, you had to take it because it's very, very hard to pass. So um, when I got that run down that front straightaway and I was able to get that close to him again, which it was hard to even get close sure. to cars. So when I got that close, I was like, OK, this is my one shot. I got to make it worth it here. And, uh, and we did. So. Um, it, it worked out as planned, and um, just cool to get you know Home Depot and, and, and Victory Lane and, and Dollar General and all those guys, uh, you know, stuck with me out you know throughout these years, and um, you know sticking with me and getting in Victory Lane is, is a huge deal, and obviously getting Jason Ratcliffe uh, yeah. in Victory Lane for the first time that was really neat. Did did Mark congratulate you? Have you heard from him, or did you talk to him after the race? I haven't I haven't talked to him yet, but um, I need I need to give him a shout and uh, you know give him a call, but. Uh, it, like I said, it, it's it's unbelievable to be racing against those guys for, for a win like that. And we were, we were joking around earlier. I said, man, it's like a dream. You know, it's like you, you line up against, you know, Mark Martin and, you know, you win the race and then Vanilla Ice is in victory lane. Like, it doesn't even sound <laughs> real. You know, like, that sounds like something you woke up in the yeah. morning and said, hey, I want to poke on Vanilla Ice is in victory lane. In yeah. victory lane. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. So it's just one of those cool stories. Um, I, I want to ask you too, because you made the comment. I heard you on the on the radio afterwards. And you said um, no rain involved in this one, because I, I asked David Rudiman the same thing. He won the Coca Cola 600. It was rain shortened, and I said, "How much did winning that second race uh, at Chicago Lane? I think it's very one. How much did that mean to you?" And he goes, "I'm not going to lie to you." He said, "I would that first win means a lot, but winning the way I did the second time means even more." D for do sure. You, do you relate I'd to that? I'd say same story for sure. You know, that's um, being able to pass a car and win the race uh, that way was, it's the, the moment is you can't even explain it. What, what goes through your, your, your body and how you, you know, you feel about that time. It's just, uh, it's unreal. You can't replicate it. And, you know, as, as hard as we all work at this sport and as much effort that, that my team puts in, myself puts in, uh, all that is just, it all comes down to that one moment when you finally won. You finally won that race, and uh, it just means so much. So the emotions are unreal. Um, you know, I, I keep reliving. I was sitting on the airplane uh, last night. Our plane broke, so we were stuck up there till 12:30. But I was just sitting there on the plane and just thinking about coming off, you know, turn three and pulling in victory lane, and you know, all the things I got, and all the people that came, uh, you know, into victory lane and, and congratulated me. I thought that was one of the coolest things was to see, you know, Denny Hamlin came in and, and, and you know, congratulated me, and a lot of guys did, and. 
uh, you know, to see that, that was really cool. See, people were excited to see me win. I thought that was one of the coolest things. Yeah, that's what they say. There's no better feeling than the respect of your competitors. Yeah, that was really neat. It was a surprise. I really, I thought that was awesome. Hey, more with Joey Logano coming up. And Second career win for Joey Logano. His first came in Louder, New Hampshire. He breaks a 104 race winless streak. Youngest cup driver ever to win at Pocono. Also the first cup win for his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe. Danielle talks to Jason Ratcliffe a little bit later in the show. Now, you know, everybody wants to categorize wins. Like they'll say that's a statement win. That's a big win. That's a team win. Well, how, how do you categorize this win? Aren't they all big wins? That's what well, I think. At least they are to me. You, know, I, I, you never take a win for granted, that's for sure. And, um, you know, as you work so hard for this, it's, uh, you know, it really means a lot. And obviously for me, um, as, as, you know, a contract year, um, you know, in, in needing, you know, something big to happen and uh, being able to win those four nationwide races this year, uh, you know, getting a, a Sprint Cup win here at Pocono. Um, hopefully that, that helps me get my future figured out one way or another. So, um, you know, all that's good. And, 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 you know, obviously winning races, man, it's just a lot of fun. You know, like I said earlier, it's what you work for day in and day out, every single day. So it's just, uh, it means a lot. You know, it, when you got that first win in New Hampshire, I don't think people gave you enough credit because a lot of people said, well, Greg Zipadelli won that race for Joey. Uh, I, I mean, I guess that's the nature of the beast in this industry, you know, that the driver gets maybe too much credit or too much blame. I'm not really sure how that works. What, <laughs> what is your thought about that? There's a lot of pressure on, on the drivers for sure, but you know that going into it, you know, you got to accept that role. Um, you know, as a driver, you're one of the leaders of the team and, uh, you know, your face is out there and you are the one driving the car. So, uh, you know, you're going to see a, a lot of blame placed on, on you uh, one way or another. So, um, you know, the, it's either really good or it's really bad, you know, but um, you got to be mentally tough. And uh, that's one of the things I learned, you know, th throughout these last, you know, three and a half, four years is, you know, I've become pretty mentally tough and getting through a lot of this stuff and, uh, you know, and, and learning on how to keep my mind focused on what it needs to be focused on. And that's driving race cars and, and doing the best job I can possibly do at that. So uh, I've learned a lot when I come to that stuff. Did, I'm curious because last year you had to go through the whole Carl Edwards saga, you know, as Carl Edwards coming over from Roush Fenway to Joe Gibbs Racing. What, was that a situation that you're talking about that made you mentally tougher? It's a tough situation to be in, for sure. And, and, and obviously coming down this year, you know, not having something, you know, secure for next year yet, um, you know, that, that stuff starts running through your mind again. But, um, you know, if you're going out there and winning races, uh, all that stuff's going to, you know, fall into place eventually. So, um, like I said, to get Dollar General uh, in Victory Lane, a new sponsor for us, uh, Home Depot, you know, Sport Clips, all those guys, um, they have helped me out a ton in my career. Uh, you know, to get them in Victory Lane like that is just, um, it's an awesome moment. Uh, for those guys, for my team that stuck with me for, you know, this whole long time and, and going through this learning curve with us, uh, you know, all those guys are, you know, a great bunch of guys that have been there since since the start of this. So it's pretty awesome. Joey, this, I'm going to date myself, but you called me old man last year anyway. So I'll <laughs> go ahead and say, I interviewed Mark Martin after he won his very first cup race in Rockingham, North Carolina. Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, so but I, we we're in Mark's backyard at the time he was living in, uh, I think, Greensboro, North Carolina. And I said, you know, Mark, in your mind, does this validate all your hard work? And he said, nope. All it means is I've won one race. And for yeah. me to survive in this sport, I have to keep winning. All right. Second story. Just the other day, we interviewed Bill Elliott before the All-Star race. And Bill said, you know, here's a guy that won over 40 races. Yeah. Right? right. He said, I never really felt secure like was my ride gonna go away or was the sponsor gonna go away and I was just blown away at how two huge stars at different times obviously in their careers but how they were able to verbalize the pressure and like you said you know it's there but but talk about that a little bit because you you, you touched on it a minute ago you have to be so I mean, confidence is one thing, but you have to be mentally tough, and those are different things. You got to be tough. You got to have thick skin in this sport. You know, so much relies on obviously performance and, and having an economy like we have right now. It's really hard to find sponsors and, and uh, you know, be uh, willing to pay the money we need to drive these things or to run these race cars. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely tough, and, and you know that. You know, I mean, it's something you know, and um, that's why you got to do the best job you can on and off the racetrack. You know, uh, you know, you got to represent your sponsors the the best way you possibly can, and, and um, at the same time be yourself and, and have a personality because uh, that's what people want too so you, there's always a balance and act between everything you do 
And um, like I said, though, winning races, there's, there's nothing better than that. Are you going to leave that trophy here? Nope. That's oh, man. That's, you know, that's going to go right next to my bed. So I can just wake up next to that thing. Good motivation, that huh? That's, that's awesome. That's perfect. Hey, thanks I, got, for, I need one on the other, the other nightstand. I like I it. one on your side. I like it. Well, thanks <laughs> for spending time with us and uh, enjoy your victory. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got it, Joey. After three years and one win, Greg Zipadilly left Joe Gibbs Racing and driver Joey Logano for Stuart Haas. So the question is, who would crew chief Joey? Well, the answer was right there all the time. Rather than go out of house, Joe Gibbs Racing promoted Jason Ratcliffe from their Nationwide Series program. Daniel Trotta went to JGR today to see how Jason helped Joey to yesterday's win. Thanks so much, Steve. It took perfect fuel mileage, a fast race car, and the perfect restart to get Joey Logano his second cup win. It was his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe's very first Sprint Cup victory. Congratulations, sir. How did it Thank feel? You. Oh, it felt good. I mean, you move, You know, I had some success in the Nationwide Series and, and coming in this year to, uh, to the Sprint Cup Series. You always have it in the back of your mind, oh, can I do this, you know? So to finally get that first win uh, under our belt with Joey and the 20 team, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment. It feels really good. You didn't have some success in Nationwide. You dominated. You won a title in 09, which you dominated that year, too. Yeah. How does that compare, your Nationwide title, to now winning in Cup, some of the toughest racing in the world? Well, I mean, it, each win is special, you know, and, of course, the championships we won on the Nationwide Series are, are very special. But this one, you know, they all have, have their place in your memory, and uh, they're all in very, very great. But I would say this is probably one of the greatest accomplishments of my career, for sure. Talk about the race at Pocono yesterday, because that's not an easy place to win the race. You guys had a lot of obstacles to overcome, and you nailed them all. Well, obviously, we had a fast car. Um, when we unloaded for the test, the car was really good. Uh, and then it showed up in qualifying. Joey put an awesome lap down, got, got the pit stall we wanted. And actually, in the end, I think the, the pit crew and the pit stall uh, ultimately got us the track position we needed to win the race. We had a fast car, but when we got back to third or fourth, boy, it was so difficult to pass, and the competition was so evenly matched uh, that you knew coming down to the end of the race it was going to take something special to get that back. Oh, he is all under Mark Martin. He oh, gets he got it. Him. Sideways. He got him. Martin sideways off the corner. Here comes Joey Logano for the race lead. That's a great move by Joey Logano. The young kid puts the savvy move on Mark Martin. You're like, your jaw drops watching it on TV. What was it like for you? Well, we uh, first, you know, we were we were on the edge of our seat, hoping that we had enough fuel to finish the thing. So that was the first drama, and then. Once we got to the point where we're like, okay, I think we got a fuel to finish it, and they had multiple restarts, which Joey was doing very well. So that move was, I think, Mark bobbled a little bit and and opened the door up, and Joey took advantage of it. It was it was a textbook move, and I, I think Mark would have obviously done the same thing. I don't know any driver that wouldn't have. So after Pocono, you want to celebrate, mm -hmm. get home, but the plane was broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but you know what? Actually, it, it was good. All, the whole team, we got to go to a local restaurant there and sit down and enjoy it and, and build some more memories. Uh, so even though we had to wait and we're all tired this morning, uh, it was all worth it and it just added on to a, a special weekend. The tricky triangle was quite a treat for Jason Ratcliffe. His first time to Pocono, he gets to victory lane. A lot of momentum heading to Michigan. Thanks, Danielle. In part two tomorrow of her conversation with Jason Ratcliffe, Jason will talk about Joey's future at Joe Gibbs Racing.